Hello, welcome to the show. Officially, I'm welcoming everyone. Bonjour, hola, yasu, dobri den, konnichiwa, good day. Privyet, salut. There is so many greetings. Ni hao, aloha, ciao, namaste. There's so many greetings I could use. I'm welcoming everyone to the show. Thanks for tuning in. There is millions of other things you could be doing right now, but you decided to take a break from what you're doing and tune in for this show. Okay, so I'm welcoming everyone. And just to introduce myself, my name is Petr Cichy. I'm the freelance front-end developer, YouTuber at I Hate Tomatoes, where I record tutorials and screencasts and courses on front-end development, anything to do with interactive front-end development. So I like to tweak JavaScript and create something unique. So that's where my expertise comes in. And I'm very, very happy to be hosting this first ever live session on Awards Academy, an interactive learning platform where smart digital professionals like you learning and sharing. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. And if you haven't already, jump onto the YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe, you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other future live stream like this. Okay, so make sure you subscribe. And I won't be here today alone. I'll have two special guests with me, which we will introduce one by one. And the first one, first of my guests, special guests from Italian, currently living in Greece, Chiara Aliotta is a co-founder and IR director at Until Sunday and Pattern Tales. Welcome to the show, Chiara. Why you don't take a minute or two and introduce yourself to the crowd? I think Chiara is dropping off. I'm Technical here. difficulties hit the Greeks okay. island, but that's okay. We can get back to Chiara. Let's get to the next guest, which yeah. is Dan Clover from Amsterdam. Sorry, Chiara, you back. Fantastic. All right. Sorry, Dan. I'll hold I you think on. All righty. Let's get yeah. back to Chiara. I just said, if you could spend a minute or two and introduce yourself to the I'm back. audience. <laughs> okay. All righty. So this is what always happens, happened to me many times on live streams, drops off of sound, drop off those video, video, we'll just keep going. Dan, as I mentioned, is from Amsterdam, founder and director at the Build in Amsterdam. And yeah, I don't know. he will now yeah. spend a minute or two and introduce yourself then to the audience. No, a minute or two, that's quite long. But uh, I'll do like my best. Whatever you like. So, uh, <laughs> no, so yeah, how I'm already introduced, I'm Dan Klaver, a co founder of Build in Amsterdam and creative director. Uh, Build in Amsterdam, we focus on strategy branding and e commerce, and we've won the e commerce side of the year at awards three times in a row. Um, besides that I'm a founder of Building Amsterdam, I'm, I'm almost my main passion and hobby in life to being father of two beautiful daughters. Um, and uh, actually before I started my career, that's also the picture, you see one of the pictures you see, I had a very short MMA career. But uh, after being knocked out twice, I thought it was better to do something else with my brain. So, uh, and I build a, motorcycles with uh, yeah, custom motorcycles with a bunch of friends so that's a bit about me wow fantastic intro very col colorful and we'll make sure we don't provoke you today so there is no broken bones in the house okay <laughs> all righty kiara hopefully the connection to greek islands is a little bit stronger so let's get back to kiara can you spend 30 seconds to 45 to introduce yourself no. <laughs> anyway, we're having again difficulties. So we'll jump into the content. But before we get there, I wanted to obviously introduce the show, how it will work. And uh, so you know what to expect. There will be always myself hosting two other guests, professional digital professionals from the industry. And we'll try to break down three websites that we've picked 
And along the way, we're also asking you to leave us some comments in the chat. So leave comments in the chat related to the websites that we will be going through. And when we get through one, we'll then answer some questions and then we move to the other one and so on. So pretty simple format. And as I said, I encourage everyone, if you have any questions related to any of the technicalities or design patterns on the sites, let us know in the comments. And we've got a team behind the scenes working, picking the questions and then filtering it to us. So that's how it's going to work. But before we get to the first website, let's jump to Kiara, making yeah. sure that it does not break. And yeah. Kiara, take it away. Let's see. Let's see. OK, so hello, everyone. I'm very sorry for this lagging uh, internet right now, but it's OK. It is the beauty of being on an island. So I am an art director and designer. So I'm founder of the agency Until Sunday. I, as I told you, I live on an island and on a Greek island, but uh, I am Italian, so again, a European accent uh, with a lot of Italian love. <laughs> and um, I'm also founder of another project together with my husband, which is the Patent Tales, and doesn't have anything to do with design and brand consulting, which is my main job, but that has to do with patterns inspired by books, so completely creative project. Plus, on the island, we own a gallery for designers and artists, and I super side the art direction. So this is in briefly who I am. So I hope you catch uh, everything <laughs> so Fantastic. far. No, it's been great. No drop-offs, and that's what that's what that's what it is all about. Okay. So thanks for the introduction. Really good. I know we sort of went few times back and forth. So let's move to the first website. So today we'll be looking at three websites. The first one is is vnla.com the other one is iia audio and then editorlnew.com so these are the three websites we'll be discussing deconstructing breaking down and we'll jump to the first one which is the vnla and at own studio it's french don't don't quote me on my french I'm, i don't speak french but i had my friend telling me how to pronounce this so i tried my best the site is built on WordPress and using some 3JS and a WebGL behind the scenes. Uses AnimateJS to animate the elements on the page and Barba.js for the page transitions. Okay, so that's us. these are just some technicalities behind the site. And we'll be looking at brand personality, voice and tone, the animations, interactions, the Easter egg and navigation. By the way, if you want some of these PDFs, and some of these slides that just check out the YouTube description and you should see a PDF link to a PDF with all these breakdowns. Okay. Some of the technicalities behind the site. Obviously, we also looking at the performance, how it behaves in the browser, how quickly it renders. So again, you can find all this information in the description under the video. Okay. Some opportunity to serve the images in a better modern format like JPEG 2000 or WebP and remove unused JavaScript. So we'll have these snippets of the smarts behind the site in front of or after every of the of the deconstruction. So feel free to download it. And now let's switch. Let's try to switch to my browser and see if we can explore the site. And I will hand it over to Dan. Can you tell us what do you think about the site? What's the first impression? I'll actually reload the page because I think there is some initial impact. So let's take it away from here. Yeah, I Dan, think they want to position your, themselves probably as a very fun and interactive. Ah, you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a little bit delayed. Sorry. My first impression is they probably want to position themselves as a very fun and okay. So I think they want to position themselves as a very fun and interactive studio. So and that playful element uh, really comes across immediately with all the interactions and the animation and the, and I like that little cookie um, cookie nose like the how do you call them the, the cookie. Yeah, the cookie thing on the bottom, like that is an actual illustration of a cookie itself. I think that's kind of fun. Cookie disclaimer. Having those little elements in there. 
Um, yeah, the cookie, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, overall, I think that it, it, just, it doesn't, all the effects doesn't do justice to the actual content because you don't see uh, the images really well. So, I think the effect maybe takes over the side too much. Um, but if it's a choice, um, it doesn't have my preference, but I understand why they're doing it. Um, yeah, overall design wise, uh, it's, 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 for me, my personal opinion, it's, it's, it's okay. I, I think it can be, typography wise, a bit more exciting. Uh, um, but I've, I always really enjoy when so much effort into uh, something unique and trying to love and to inspire us all to, to come up with new, new things. That, that I really like about this project, and I also really like how you if you click on the on the project on the home page, how that same effect is applied to the detail page. Yes, I like the transition to the next page, yeah. which is nice transition to what Kiara is thinking about the site. What, from your yeah. endpoint or from your view, has this site that makes it stand out? Okay, guys. So, um, I really love, first of all, the simplicity and how clean everything looks. I really like the choice of uh, colors. First of all, they it's, it's very smart. And I think we've officially lost Kiara for the sixth time today. But let's uh, give it a go again before Kiara <laughs> loads full time. I just wanted Wait. to say this unusual navigation when the arrow is actually pointing up and when you get to the left edge of the browser, yeah. it changes and loads the next one. So very unusual navigation, which I think for some generic audience might be a little bit hard to, to use, but Yes, Kiara, now you're back. Yeah. What, 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 what do you like? Yeah, sorry. I wanted just to say that I love the way they use the interaction with typography and, uh, and the general interaction they've done in the project page. But I want you to go in one project page specifically, the John Nollet one. Can you just do that for me, Peter? Sorry, I just want to show you something yeah. that I really loved. <clears throat> If you go into it's the project, navigation, yes, the John Nollet. Uh, I'm not even know if I'm pro on the homepage, but anyway, um, so there is a very nice treatment of the typeface, and which is not then applied to all the other project pages, which made me think when we do all this animation, we need to make make sure that there is kind of consistency. And sometimes it's not very easy to be maintained, especially when you have uh, a big amount of projects. So if you open that journal one, yeah, see the typeface. I, I think it's very beautiful, very fashionable, fashion editorial because of, because of the, the project as well. So you see there is this typeface behind the image and then it's, it's just beautiful. I really love it, the fact that we have layers. But then if you go on another, other pages uh, of the website, you on other projects, you wouldn't find a very similar uh, way of uh, uh, treating treatments. It's completely different. It's just this circle going inside, but no full page images, typography with the image. So always say think that if you do something like this, oh yeah, here you have it. Okay, so maybe it didn't work for me. I checked the website so many times, but it didn't work for me. So I always think about the maintenance. In fact, for my own um, level of, uh, I mean, for my own in, um, internet connection right now on the island, this website is not really loading well. So I don't know about the speed. We saw some numbers before, but I guess it's quite when we do any. Mm -hmm. how much I mean 
in how heavy do we want to go and do we yeah. want to make it so I, fun I and playful mean, and or do we want to give priority to the functionality it itself it yeah i couldn't see all this any okay kiara dropped off again but i think i know what she's mentioning she's mentioning that the side might be too heavy on a on a low low bandwidth so just we need to be careful about that i think she referred that some of the projects did not load the same way and then she looked it's that it's inconsistent but to me it actually loads the same all the detail of the projects with the big hero image and the animation in the middle mm. of it so yeah exactly can you hear me now can you see me now yes he, we can hear yes <laughs> I'm very sorry. It's yeah, I know. I know what you mentioned about the size. Going on, it, it really. What do we think about the cursor? I know a lot of I'm websites very, using custom cursor. Sorry, I mean that's the thing. So, so I'm just showing you the really heavy website. Don't work on uh, on an island. Then what do you think about the icon, about the cursor? Yeah, um, we actually had an interesting discussion in our own agency about this. Uh, I know seeing that some people really enjoy it and others really hate it because um, they don't, they feel lost when the cursor is changed to something else. Like I think we as designers are very easily used to things like this. Um, I personally think it's an interesting way of giving different meaning and different ways of navigating by just changing the cursor because you suddenly need a lot less interface. So I think it's it's interesting that we're playing around with it as an industry, but be prepared that not everybody is going to like it. And I think here maybe again, but I have that overall to side. It's maybe just for my own liking. It's it's a bit too much. Yep. What I like about the the experience on the navigation when the border, I thought initially it was a border animating away, but it's actually a background image. So there is a background image, which is a gradient that looks like a border on the text, and it actually animates from one side and then goes away from the other side. So if I hover over experience and move away, you see how it goes to the end of it. So it's not actually a border. It's a small detail that I picked up on and uh, I looked behind the scenes how it's how it's done and it, there is actually transparent transparent uh, gradient and only at the bottom is a black bar and then the background yeah. image is moving away. So very simple sort of unusual treatment of uh, instead of just borders coming in and out, yeah. it actually yeah. moves away. Okay, so small things that I picked yeah. up on. All right. Yeah, so then I like it. Yeah, and we'll move to the next one. So let me just go back and see if we have any questions coming up. Hopefully the team behind the scenes is picking up some questions. We have a question from Perrin from France. Do you think the utility or usability of this website is lacking? I feel it's remarkably done, but it's difficult for a person to decipher the information it is trying to convey what do you think kiara i think i think it sort of relates to what you were saying so yeah can you just say them can you just wrap it because you break down sorry a little bit so he do, says do that about that, the yeah do you think that the utility can... and usability of the website is lacking it feels mm. that it's done really well but it's difficult for a person to sometimes use because it's so different. What do you think? Mm. Well, the thing, thing is that what, what I, yeah, what I think is that I guess they know the audience. So, and that's the answer. So, Definitely audience is not in Greece, yeah. on a Greece, Greek island. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, we're going to move to the next one, next website. And that is III Audio. III no. Audio is, is made by Spring Summer. 
and I think they are spring summer they are in Norway let me check my notes oh, no. spring summer Denmark sorry sorry I messed up the Scandinavian countries it's from Denmark spring summer is it spring or summer quite clever name for agency as well and it is built on prismic so the back end is prismic and the front end with html5 css3 node and react next js plus webpack and the website actually will be looking at the content architecture the product display which is a, this is actually e-commerce site shopping cart process and the typography very interesting site and again if you need these details of the performance check out the description under the video on, on youtube it is a little bit slower a little bit a little bit worse performance than than uh, the first side we looked at okay so let's get back into my browser i need to stop sharing oh actually no i'll switch my screen to another chrome tab which is iii audio what a playful name for a website as well iii I, 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 I audio in italian means uh, can you hear me yeah in italian means uh, pain it's like i i it's a pain very painful thing so it's very strange indeed oh why <laughs> it's a very strange name yeah if you say i i it's a very sicilian way from where i come from so i i yeah <laughs> I nice. really pain. So, as right. Peter, what just to, for you to know, Cara, you I start on this one. yeah, I switch off the camera because it seems it's better. So, I hope you can hear me. I'm very sorry you cannot see me, uh, but it's right. maybe it's, it's getting better this way. So, at least we can have a productive day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, now it's all good. Yeah, go for it. Now it's your turn. Just break it down for us. What do you like? What oh. you don't like? What do you think could be improved? Okay, so this website, I really love how minimal it's, it's going. I mean, it's very minimal. I'm very surprised, actually, it's uh, even heavier than the other one. I'm very surprised, but okay. Um, I love the use of few colors, gray and the neon. We see, again, the neon green uh, color used. What I, I really loved as well is the configurator, but I have a few notes on this website. Uh, the first one is it's an e-commerce website. And I have to be honest, I wasn't able to buy anything. And I'll tell you why. The experience is very, very dis disruptive, but in a way that I don't know where I, I am at some point. So for example, I remember I found a configurator at some point, but then I couldn't find it back anymore. <laughs> And um, if you go into a product page, uh, Peter, okay, or in a category, if you actually remain in that page and just go into the category, it's divided by category. Uh, oh, sorry, oh yeah, here is the configurator. It's fine, it's fine, stay here. You find a configurator, which I lost right, the, yeah. when I started navigating through that so the configurator is just great i really love the interactivity i really love to see how i can actually customize my own product i think it's amazing i really love that and um the funny thing is that i couldn't see it everywhere uh or maybe i lost it i was looking at it then there is a very nice video that showed that ha the headbands can actually fold it's made of recycling materials as well so there are so many elements and so many features you want to know about this uh, product but they are sparse all over the web and at some point i just lost them so um, if you ask me i wouldn't probably buy in from the website but probably would go on amazon or somewhere else to make sure that you know i have a very smooth uh, buying process and um, and the categories as well page which if you go on the home page so if you click the little logo uh yep. yeah uh, the yep. II logo yeah and then you scroll down um a little bit and then so it's a very short they present their top products i guess and then we go down a little bit and there is the dj well actually there are the some djs are using it okay fine which uh, set us in the professional field of who is going to use those um headphones but then we have the categories list in your way. So for DJ in the studio, on the move. And if you click on one of them, 
um, I really find that it's a very strange to find in a page where I actually want to see the products. So many information that are not really related to each other. So we start with the home, with the category, fine. It's uh, for sound and comfort. Then you go down. And then you have uh, the products, fine. So I can start navigating and see what products are for the studios. Then you have some images and interaction. It's OK, but I'm thinking, why? Because I want to go inside the page. I want to see each product one by one. Then I have an interview. So if I had this kind of experience in a real shop, I will just probably go. This is this page is the page where I will make my mind up if I want to buy, if I want to actually go and understand more about this product. But it's so full feel of information and reviews as well. The reviews are linked to an outside source. So I'm already dropping out of the website in the moment I am about to buy, why? I mean, this is very, very strange. I would like to know why, I mean, about this decision behind it. But I thought it was a very, very difficult experience, very disruptive, very, um, I don't know, too overwhelming, too many information. I cannot, at the end of this uh, journey, I wouldn't be able to actually make a decision if I really want to buy this product or not. But this is me, of course. But uh, I think always when you think about websites, an e-commerce website to think on a real uh, on a offline experience. So do you want to be interrupted by an interview in that moment while you're looking on the headphones? I don't think so. Do you want to go on another store to find out about reviews? I don't think so. You want to just to stay there and get all the information at once and make sure that you're doing a very good buy in that moment. So that's my opinion about this website and in general the user experience. So good, no, great insights, great insight. And you know, everyone has got a different opinion. We all come to a web, we look at it from different angles. So I, I'm sure people appreciate uh, your feedback, your comments. And what what does Dan think about the site? Yeah, I understand where she's coming from. Um, in, but I would say it's my first reaction that I really, really like the design uh, of the website. I think it's really well designed. Uh, yes, it's very minimalistic, but it still clearly has character and it represents the brand, I think, very well. Um, so they have these minimalist layouts. You should actually check it, especially on mobile. I think you also feel almost the desktop is almost a blown out mobile experience. Maybe they could have put a little bit more love into the desktop because it feels sometimes maybe a bit too big and that's why it maybe also feels overwhelming, like you are talking about. Uh, but the mobile experience is also really, really good. And I think it's, for me, it's better than the desktop experience. But I get, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to tell a lot more stories around the product because the product, of course, is a very minimalistic, beautiful product, but they have a lot of competition. So they need storytelling around it. But maybe uh they went a bit overboard with the storytelling and lost a bit of the simple e-commerce feel because i think it's a very minimalistic brand so that could also be an approach to the website uh, and you do see it in the aesthetics but maybe not in the way the pages are set up the, the sometimes the storytelling yeah. takes it over a bit and i think what's missing is that you, for example if you see these DJs or the studio, they just immediately shot the product maybe on the photo or that you see the product that they are wearing, so you connect it immediately. Um, but for me overall, like especially that configurator, is, I've seen a lot of configurators, but this is one of the best I've seen around, like how all these interactions work, with the animations, how it works. I think they've put a lot of effort into that. And I think also from a content side, it's, 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 it's well thought out. It's, it's beautifully, it's probably all beautifully rendered all nice in line so um yeah i understand it from an uh, that you can feel a bit lost uh, i also had that i think it should be a bit more focused on the products uh but i definitely do like the, the effort oh and what one main thing i had is actually for me it doesn't immediately communicate why i have to buy this or that product so you don't have clear titles so you have those long text lines that are sort of the titles, but you don't scan them easily. So what you're sort of missing is an easy uh, way of, of clarifying why you should buy this or that product. 
And that's another thing I would also for the people that are watching, what I would recommend. I think a lot of brands, when they're around for a few years, they somehow think that you know the brand. And while if a brand is starting up, what they do on the homepage is have this like this one page here, clear to communicate where the brand stands for and why you should have an emotional connection with it. And I think here uh, they, they could play that up a bit better on the homepage, immediately clarify why I should buy this brand. Because actually the modular way you can shop this brand like is, is, is really, really cool. I think, I think that sh they should play that up more than the whole, um, the whole sort of uh, DJs and people that are using it, etc. I think the modularity of this headphone is the use, the real USB, and why people want to buy it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, agree. I agree with I agree. both of you, and I, I think what what makes it quite hard to to read is the long lines because the side is we're looking at desktop, we're looking at the large screen, and every all the text lines are very long, and uh, that it's it's very hard. It feels like a lot of information, but if you step back a little bit, and as you said, maybe on mobile. The site is much much easier to digest than than the full blown, you know. There's no restriction on the width, which is quite unusual to be honest. Usually there is some sort of maximum height or width on on the site, which would make it easier to 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 read, I guess. Yeah. Also, yeah. I yeah. yeah. Sorry, Dan. Yeah. You go. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me first. Oh. Okay, thank you. Um, so no, the other thing is about the headers, uh, which are all underlined, uh, if you can see, and they're breaking in a very, very strange way. I think in, on mobile, it works okay. But on big screen, like listen your way. I mean, it's fine, but it's too much. much. Why underlying all these? Why dividing them? At the beginning, I thought they were, they were like menu items that I could click like sustainable design. And then I understood actually it's a, a B, the H1 header. So it's a header in, in the page. So it's defining a session. And uh, I thought, okay, it's a stylist uh, way and approach. But again, in terms of legibility, I think it makes things even harder than they should be. Well, I mean, I, I can't justify it completely. That's it. That's my my. Uh, idea. Uh, when it comes to typography, I'm very picky and I'm very like, uh, it could just set uh, a website off because the typography wasn't, uh, I, w I wasn't able to follow up with the typography. So I'm already, the blink effect that Malcolm Gladwell talked about is already happening there. If it doesn't click, it doesn't. So, and I'm like, <clears throat> like this. So I'm really, really feeling that I cannot navigate the website. So. Alrighty. I've got and one question we'll, from one of our uh, listeners. Sorry, go go for it then. Now, last thing I want to say, well, because uh, typography wise, because I think with a minimalistic website, you can easily go for a Helvetica type of typeface. And I think what they've done here is they do have they've added character with their typeface to this minimalistic brand. So from a design, from an identity point of view, I think it's, it's a very strong website. But I think, and that's the great thing about e-commerce, you can constantly optimize it and evolve it. I think it has a strong base as a website, and, it, and if they start like pushing the, or a bit more heavily used on the conversion, instead of just a story, uh, and less on the storytelling, so better mix, I think then the, this, the website will head it in the right direction. All right, a question from Yvette. She's asking, what's our opinion about the select background color? It's green and neon. So it's com it's the same color as the initial header, top header. It's bas basically, the whole side is black and white plus the green. And the green is also used for the text. Any opinion on this, Kiara? I, I really like it. I really like the way they are using the neon color to highlight some details. At the really beginning, I thought they were links. Then you understand because they're used consistently all over the website to highlight details of uh, the product. You understand you don't have to click on that. So one important thing is if, if when you create websites in general is if you're decided that the underline is for highlight some concept, you have to go with that concept all over the website. You cannot change in the middle. That's my opinion because otherwise people, they're not very 
uh, educated like us, they will go on clicking everywhere and they will think this is not working. I'm not really happy with the gray color, but just because it looks very harsh uh, uh, on my screen, then I don't know another screen. It just looked very harsh. The gray background with the black color, it gives this effect. So I, I rely on the fact that it's a choice that they, they've done. I mean, uh, the gray, the neon gr green color on gray background doesn't read that, that, that well. But again, you're not losing very important information. I mean, it's okay. Listen your way. It's fine. You read it. With some effort, you can read it. It's not impossible to be read. But it's nice. It's uh, The contrast is perfect. So I don't have anything to say about that. So then it would be just very subjective. Probably I wouldn't use the gray background. But as long as there is contrast and I can read it and it's a, t and it's a choice that is consistently applied all over the website, I think I will just leave it as it is. It's just fine. It's nice. It makes the brand uh, standing out, as Dan was saying, like to look different. Alrighty. One more question. One more question from uh, Mireira Ortega. Does the design help the user to understand the content architecture and purpose of the website? Dan, question for you. Yeah, I think we've touched on that a bit. Um, it's a difficult one. Um, I think the design so it is, itself. It is, it is uh, an online shop. It is clear that you can actually buy stuff on it. You know, to me, it wasn't so clear unless you go no, to the detail of the configurator. Here, here. I think when you when you land here, I think it's here. You're missing that it's an e-commerce. Like I think That's here they could have added a, a, a starting, price, starting price or something like that. I know. It's e-commerce because I see a car, but the whole homepage, I'm really missing the shopping experience. So yeah. and you and see that's photos, for example, you scroll further, you see all the photos. And it's not communicating anything, it's it's just photos. There's nothing, no text on there, no, no nothing to relate to shopping or link to shopping. Um, so no, I don't think everything is helping. Although of course the UI and, and how it's designed, it's 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 all very beautifully done. Um, but yeah, could be linked better to to understand where you need to go. Also, when you click on headphones, uh, it's still I believe when you click on headphones, you still don't clearly see it's a shop. The first step. Yeah. So. Yep. Got it, got it. I think it answered that question. I, we have to move on to the next one. Sorry to cut you off there, Kiara. We just uh, want to move on to the next one. It's fine, so it's we fine, can no answer the question at the end of the next one, okay? Otherwise, we run out of time and we're never going to get mm -hmm. to the third one, which people are obviously waiting for as well. And that one is exciting as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the slides. And we will look at the final final side of the day or side of the peak of today's live deconstructions or reviews. And that is Editorial New, which is made by a locomotive in Canada. And it is a website that has a charcoal CMS, charcoal CMS, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and GSAP or GreenSock animations. And we will look at the typography in motion, interaction, animations. This one is very playful, very interactive. We look at the navigation and the dark mode as well. Okay, again, if you need details of this, head over to YouTube and download the PDF. Performance-wise, how could this be any better? It gets 100 out of 100 and opportunities to improve self-static assets with efficient cache policy and properly sized images. So would it go from 100 to 110 percent? I don't know how that's possible, but to me that side looks very good in terms of technicality, loads very fast. And definitely the authors were looking at this and trying to make it 100 percent because that doesn't happen often. Okay, so that is the next side we'll be looking at. And I will just switch to another tab. Editorial new, here we come. And 
Here is the website. We're going to start with Kiara because I know she loves font and typography. So what do you think? What's your view on this editorial new website? Yeah, well, okay. I'm very biased because I really, really love the work Locomotive is doing on the web. I think they leverage the user experience on the web in every project they, they do. When they win site of the month or site of the day, I'm always so, super happy. I have a bunch of their websites as, uh, in my collections because it's like, I, I, with the title, I wish I designed this website. So going back to this specific one, I really love it. First of all, if you, I don't know if you love it from the beginning and the way it starts, it's like a, a, a journal, like a newspaper. I just love that. It's a very nice touch and it really set you already into the mood of the typeface. So it's a, an editorial typeface. Then, they re, they, then if you scroll down, you understand you can also use it for web. But it, it's already giving you this feeling that you are having to do with something that is a typeface oriented. So I really love that. So I, I'm, I really like the inter, interactive part of it. I really like the fact that you can, it's a one page website. It's you just a long scroll, but you still have a table of content and the treatment, it's like a magazine. So if you just go into the table of content, you can see it's applied like a magazine. So here again, when we talk about storytelling on the web, when you decide that you want to go to newspaper style and way of being, you have to carry that story all over with you and locomotive is great at doing this and before the website and this is what i wanted to say comparing to this one the storytelling is part of the navigation and the interaction and the functionality of the website and this is what i like of this website and this is why the other website that we saw before the ii headphones uh didn't have it didn't have this kind of integration between storytelling and functionality. At the end of the story, you want to sell this typeface as you want to sell the headphones. So you don't have to get lost in the story. You want to keep the story going and make sure that the user is following you through the different passages and not losing it somewhere on, in the middle. So uh, I'm, I don't know about you and your experience with print, but when I started uh, working as a graphic designer, we usually get in our office, in our agencies, uh, a book with all the typefaces that were very trendy during that year. And these books were very nice design with all the opportunity you can, uh, you know, lay it out inside through the pages. But of course, it was very, very static. This website, it's a, a way, the way I want is always to have this book work so that I can test the typeface even before trying, even before uh, buying it. And so it's a, a real representation or translation, interactive translation of uh, how a typeface, um, I mean, should be uh, uh, sold. And I love the way they did it. Uh, yeah, the configuration here, the, this, I found this a little bit tricky and difficult. Again, because I have a very lagging website, uh, sorry, internet, the lines didn't load. So I didn't know what the dots belongs to. I didn't know they were the lines, so I didn't see that. So again, I had to probably wait a little bit. It's funny because it says it's a very good performance, but apparently it didn't perform really well with my speed of internet. And uh, yeah. I mean, I'm very biased. I'm very sorry because uh, I love locomotives, so I cannot be uh, very uh, focused and objective as I wish. And then I like, like typefaces. I think the, uh, the people, the words uh, uh, community who choose these websites knew about it, so they pick it and they say, "Let's see what Kara can do. What can what Kara can say about this website?" So maybe I'm not so objective, but I really like this website. So good. Thanks for the input. Great, great insights. Uh, Kiara, and we'll switch to Dan. Dan, what do you what do you think about the interactivity on the site? Uh, yeah, I'm not biased, um, and I really hate everything about this site. No, I'm not kidding. No, no, I I love it. I think <laughs> I think it's it's so well done. It's uh, 
Yeah, just like Kiara said, the, the work of locomotive is uh, is almost all, always really good and re really well thought out. Sometimes I think it's uh, again, sometimes it's a bit too much animation wise, but here I think everything is almost perfectly executed. Um, yeah, the way like it's it's it tells a story. It makes you want to try the typeface. It makes you want to buy the typeface. But uh, and also this this randomized button. Like they're all little nice layouts. You immediately understand like. Well, what it can do for you when you're gonna use it. This yeah, all really nicely from well. What I especially like this smart little thing when you when you land on the page and you scroll, that the first thing they do is the typeface goes from light to bold. Did you see that? So it immediately shows all the different way uh, way it's just by scrolling. So, so we scroll now. So yes. That very, very first paragraph, you just see, will go light to the guest typeface almost. And I think that, so when we scroll back, it will go to light again. So it immediately shows you with one little scroll all the different weights there are and how responsive the typeface be. Like this is very, very nice. So uh, the only thing, the only minor thing I would have is when I, I actually was scrolling and then I clicked on the menu and because it is a menu item I was really expecting pages uh, instead of that it's sort of a sidebar navigation so uh, I suddenly jumped all the way to the top somewhere and I was, I was like and then I clicked something else and jumped to the bottom so I understood it because I understand how these things work uh, but I think that's uh, if they maybe use a different icon or something it would be maybe a bit clearer or have more clear chapters that resonate with the menu. But I also like the way like, they, they reference the typography to the 90s and then they have all these 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 90s uh, cheesy images. Uh, I love it. It's uh, it's really well done. Also mobile performs really well on my mobile and it's a great experience as well. So I wish I had more bad yeah. things to say, but I actually don't. Yeah. Good, that's great. I, I love it actually too, because I think it's, it's configurator made well and uh, you don't need multiple pages you can let people explore the font and see it in different contexts as a magazine as a web heading and uh, it really can help you decide whether you want to use it on your project or not and then you just hit the big get the font button at the top so to me this is more e-commerce site than the previous one we looked at just because of the clarity of hey there is one product and that's the button where you can get it. And if you're not sure, just keep exploring until it convinces you. And I think the site convinces you really well. So that's that's really good. We've got a question yeah. here from... We've got a question here from Tony. Thanks, Tony, for the question. Can you speak about the software these animations are made on? Anyone wants to pick this question? Mm. Already, I, I can answer. You, Peter, the developer. Yeah, it's made. It's made by the GreenSock or GSAP, GreenSock animation platform. So uh, a lot of it is made using GreenSock, and all the scrolling animations are obviously JavaScript. So if I would look behind the scenes and look at the inspect inspect the element, then you would see a lot of JavaScript moving the stuff on the page. So you would have a very hard time doing this with uh, CSS. And that's why you need, for something like this, you need JavaScript animations. Okay, so that's GreenSock GSAP. And we've got a question from Kitsch Kata. Kitsch Kata, the third one is like Papyrus Vintage Fashion Periodic. It's very interesting, but what do we, what do these people sell? Well, anyway, I didn't get that question, so I can't pass it on. <laughs> anyway, any <laughs> final thoughts on the site? We are obviously giving it thumbs up, uh, and looks like you both as well. Uh, and I just want to tell you, Peter, can I just jump on something? That, because you say that it's very focused and it's a very easy product. Uh, I mean, it's easy to focus on just one product. But I just want to tell you that this is not a physical product. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's a typeface. So I don't think it was easier. I think the first website should, could have been easier because it's a physical product with real features that you can actually, they are tangible. This one has a lot of 
technical aspect. Of course, the audience is completely different, but you have to be very creative on how to talk about typefaces because, and again, how to make a typeface stand out from thousands of typefaces that are out there. So I think there, again, it's a it's an amazing e-commerce website. And I think what we can learn from here is that uh, storytelling and product needs to go hand in hand. And uh, it doesn't matter how difficult is the product you need to sell. The important thing is you find a way to get your user into it and get it passionate about it to even know more. And that's what you need to do. I guess in every website you design, it doesn't matter if it's not selling something, but you have to keep your user scrolling, exploring, getting into the story. And uh, again, don't lose it in the way out. Actually, the way out is the way you want it to go out, which is buying or contact you or get even more information from you. So that's my feeling about this. I just wanted to add a note about your um, observation. Yeah, fantastic. Now, look, we can all chip in. Yep. Dan, final thoughts? Yeah. I, on one hand, I agree with Gareth, but on the other hand, I know how difficult it is to create e-commerce platforms where you have a lot more choice of products. Um, because like now here, you, you have a typeface, so you can just create, you have a real big focus on one typeface as a designer, so you can create, all, and you can create all the content yourself. So with a, when you have multiple products, you're really heavily relying also on how much the, the company can invest into um, content around that all those different products. So sometimes you're very limited to the pages you can create. Well, here they can go almost completely crazy because they just have one focus on one type and they create all the content themselves. So um, yeah, I'm a bit in the middle of that. I know also the other side how difficult it is. Yeah, I hear you then. Good insights from the e-commerce perspective. It's definitely easier to sell one product than 50 and then they all compete for the attention, you know? So I agree that selling one thing, it makes it easier to go crazy and go overboard to attract the eyeballs. So we'll wrap it up here. We running out of time. Let's uh, go back to the slides. And we, yes, as I said, we're running out of time. It's been a pleasure to, to obviously answering all your questions. Thanks for all the questions you posted in the chat it's been brilliant to chatting with kiara and dan as well and don't forget to oops sorry i skipped one don't forget to tune in to the next webinar on the 30th of june that will be by craig and anna from google talking about progressing web apps okay make sure you tune to that as well Kiara is outside just to get some broadband, just to get some network. Yes. I love it. So good. Wow. I just want to say hello. Yeah, we. I'm very sorry, but there is a price for everything, as you can see. This is the view I had from the office. And I'm very sorry my connection was very, very terrible. But I hope you get most of my insights and most of my thoughts about the websites we review together. Thank you, Peter, for right. being Nicole. an amazing host. It's been a pleasure, Kiara. Great to see you nice near the beach and uh, sunny, sunny weather. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. It's very freezing. Luckily, I've got a little heater here next to me. So I'm really jealous for your weather and pleasure for you, Dan, as well. Talking to you. Hopefully, we'll catch up on other similar sessions in the future. And to all other subscribers or watchers or viewers make sure you hit the subscribe button on youtube and uh, you don't miss the future videos on this channel okay then final thought as i said pleasure talking to you any final thoughts for the viewers oh i'm always i would always say like let's push this industry forward you know i think we're in a very young industry and like what we have with building empire is always the aim to set the new industry benchmark instead of just looking at uh, other examples and trying to remake it you know try to push it forward like in failing it doesn't matter like if you never fail it also means you're not trying so you're not trying new stuff so also with these sites yeah, sometimes of course within review it comes a bit harsh 
but uh, I think it shows that these these sites they're trying and they're trying new stuff, and that's why they get a podium, and that's why they deserve all the respect. Yep, pushing the boundaries. That's the that's the that's the answer to attract more people to your products and your site. So make sure we don't just do templates and the same thing all over again. Yeah. Let's reinvent it. And what I would like to also see more size using 3JS and some sort of 3D animations, just embrace a little bit of the technology because it moved so fast forward. It's not like 10 years ago. It's much, the browsers are much more powerful. Let's, let's push it a little bit, the creative side of things, so we create something, something uh, more special. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's also needed. I think, no, I think it's also needed. I think a lot of the sites nowadays look too much alike. There's too much similarity going on, too much e too much web shop and e-commerce and, and platform sameness and website sameness. So uh, if you look at like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you know, every site was almost different, different experience. It's, too, it's getting too uniform. So I would really encourage everybody to keep pushing and trying new stuff because it's such a young industry we're in. Yep. We'll wrap it up here. Make sure you also get to check out the Awards Academy, the platform where similar broadcasts will be broadcasted. So check out. We all digital people, we know how to Google. Just Google Awards Academy and you'll find the link. I'm sure it's under the video as well. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll wrap it up here and I'll catch you in the next broadcast. Until then, happy designing, happy coding, whatever your passion is, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. <laughs>